Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and I've got a treat for you. We are going to do a playthrough of Unsettled. Unsettled is a series of survival puzzles set in a bizarre and wondrous depths of the cosmos. Each play represents your crew's visit to a strange world within its own environment, special rules and challenges to overcome. It reminds me a ton of Robinson Crusoe in space, uh, but there's a ton of different planets, which is fun. So think of Robinson Crusoe, but you'd have different islands. <laughs> so you have different planets. The base box with the expansions from before, there are six planets. They came out with three more, which I'm definitely going to show on here but for this first playthrough because Berndt I cannot believe he hasn't done a playthrough of this game on his channel or on our channel yet. I decided to do Planet 1 to start off with. We will do Winora. But I've already done Task A of Winora on one stop. So I'm going to show you Task B. You can do any task in any order. Each one is a standalone, which is really great. I actually love that of the game. You can pick and choose any one that you want to do. And they're all going to provide you a slightly different puzzle. Each of the planets come with three tasks. And if you did back the Kickstarter, you could have gotten a fourth task for all of the original six. I was going to show the task D for this planet, but it's a bit crazy. And I thought, okay, for the first video of this on, on this channel, <laughs> let's make it a slightly less complex game, shall we? <laughs> Just so you can see if this is something maybe you want to pick up couple housekeeping items before we start our playthrough. The first is if I miss any rules in editing and someone sees it while they watch, put a timestamp and then I will put it into Klingon subtitles. So that means turn on those Klingon subtitles. Turn them on right now. The second piece is this will spoil the task B for you if you want to have your task B being totally unknown to you the first time you play. Uh, I will be spoiling that when I'm playing this. I will say though, I have played all the tasks except for the task D that just came out. Uh, uh, and I've played them multiple times and I enjoy it every time. So even though you know the puzzle uh, or you might know the puzzle, you can still have a great time playing it. This game does require two to four players. So we will be playing with two astronauts. I have Chad and Sophia with me. That's my two characters. Here's Chad. Here's Sophia. Of course, I knocked Chad over and Luna herself. I will say the game does not come with painted minis. I do have painted miniatures. They look fantastic. I love it. The guy that I traded for this game for, he had already painted them and yeah, he did a phenomenal job. I mean, look at Luna. Oh my gosh, she looks awesome. All right. So what I am going to do here, I'm going to do a setup. If you've already seen or know how the game's set up, just check the timestamps and you can go right to the playthrough. You start set up by getting all the different boards out on the table. What's great about this game is once you set these up once, you'll just pull them out of the box. So we have data, we have materials, and we have energy here. You make sure that that's in the negative section because you will uh, positively charge energy if you'd like. Uh, you need the black cubes, especially for this scenario. Those are generic tokens that are used. We have our time track here, and this is what causes us to lose the game. If ever we push down our endurance down to the red spot on our board, which we'll see in a second, we lose the game. And every time we do actions that have these symbols on them, this is going to move the time marker up. We also have a trust marker. The trust marker starts at high trust, won't stay there forever. It might go to low trust. If ever you're at high trust and you gain more trust, you actually get to pip up focus cubes. You'll see that uh, in just a second. Uh, conversely, if you're ever at low trust and you need to go down and you can't, you will pip down those focus cubes. You have to pick two different ones to be pipped down. On this side of the table, I have our three different breakthroughs. We have robotics, chemistry, and engineering. There are, I think, four cards in each? Yep, four cards in each. And each of the different planets will have different cards for these. But when you play the different tasks, these will be the same. You also have your 12 anomaly cards. Just shuffle those up as well. And then you grab distress cards cards equal to the amount of players times three. So we have six here. If ever all six are out and you need to gain another distress, everyone just loses one endurance. That's one whole round around that time tracker. So that's not good. <laughs> It's safe to say this is my favorite board of this game, the Moment Board. This is where we can pursue opportunities. We'll flip over these cards, place these ginormous discs on the nodes where we are doing pursuing that opportunity, and then we can complete these and potentially gain benefits or get rid of detriments that are caused from them. I have evenly split out my opportunities. This one, there's 12 of them, so six in each stack. They, we also have these little uh, markers to denote those different uh, discoveries that we'll find. So I've just set those out. Uh, what's important to note is in this game, you can only uh, pursue or investigate 
once in each of the nodes. So whenever you do an investigate, you have to place one of these markers to denote that you can no longer investigate there. Our last generic board is the breakthrough board. This has the breakthrough tokens for uh, the robotics, the uh, chemistry, and the engineering. We also have the three buildings that we can build, but I am playing with the expansion that I just got. It's called Luna's Synthesizer. That's this purple one, okay? So in order to build this, unlike all of these other ones where we can just spend a time to build it, or if someone has that specific comprehension on that node that we want to build, we can build these buildings. This synthesizer, we have to have someone there with one of the three comprehensions. When we build that, we can place that out on the board. There's only certain spots where you can put out structures, and you'll see that as we play. But that can help us be more efficient with Luna. And so we also have this pinkish purplish die and you'll see how that works because I'm definitely going to try and build that if I can but essentially that lets us scan more effectively because we can roll this die along with either the data die or the materials die with Luna. Each planet Luna has a specific primary function card. We have the primary function card called Soothing Robotic Voice. Chad or Sophia could place one of their focus cubes here, taking it down by two pips to be able to have an explorer on Luna's node remove one of their distress. We've now completed the basic setup. Now let's set up our two astronauts starting with Chad. So we do need to grab an avatar token. They can be any of the avatar tokens. I will use this one for Chad. Our endurance starts at max. Our uh, insight here, we can choose one of the three sides. I'm going to choose robotics for him. Uh, and you're going to see why in just a second, because I am playing with one of the expansions uh, that just came with the uh, new stuff, which is why I really want to show that. We also grab two personality uh, cards here or tokens and we get to choose one of them to play with. These personality tiles will replace one of the spaces that you have on your board for the actions that you can take. So normally when I rest uh, from a normal standpoint, you can see here you rest, you just spend a time. But with this one, we'll be able to, if we put our wonder die, which is this blue one there, we can increase our insight by one. And that's required for each turn. That's cool. So that's slightly better than this action, but actually not as a ton better because as a rest, you're still pipping up your die anyways, but giving you an insight every time you rest and resting is required every single turn. So you are going to have to use one of your three focus cubes and place it in the rest slot each turn. So I guess if you always put your blue there, you're just going to increase your insight. What's really interesting about this game is when you go to low trust, they get flipped over. And the other side is available. Okay, this is a, a recover action. So it'll cover, it'll cover up the recover spot. When you go there, you can pip up whatever die you use there by two. But then you'll increase your insight by two. However, you will push trust down by one, which isn't great. I don't think I'm going to keep that one. That one doesn't even seem great at all. I think I'm going to keep the leader. The leader, we can investigate uh, at a specific location, but what's nice is that's an upgrade from the regular investigate. See, the regular investigate action, it uh, pips your die down. With leader, it's going to pip it up. If we use the green wonder die, we'll also gain one insight, and we can pursue an opportunity. That's cool. Let's see on the other side. We rest required each turn another explorer gets to also pip up a dot yeah this one leader is definitely better if you got the two modular expansions for unsettled we have scientific fascinations and scientific specializations these are things you can add to any game of unsettled but they do not recommend and if it's your first time playing this i do not recommend using these you're going to have enough to think about i have played this game 25 times I feel pretty comfortable. So I am going to play with one. They do say you can play with two, both of them, but they don't recommend it. And I'm only going to play with one. Recording, it's going to be enough for me. I'm going to use for this one the scientific specializations. Maybe one of the other plays of the other planets, I'll use the fascinations. The fascinations I do think are slightly more complex because you actually have to forego some of your insight to then gain the benefits. For the specializations, you just have to get the right comprehension at the right time to unlock abilities. I'll show you what I mean. Chad decided to be a gizmo hand machinist, which I think sounds cool. Uh, that is his specialization. If we can get a robotics comprehension here, and that's where your first comprehension goes is right on top. 
Hence the reason why I have my insight cube showing the uh, blue robotics. Once this moves up and goes around here and we gain that uh, robotics comprehension, we've unlocked this ability. And it says, nanites assemble into extra limbs for Luna. Gain up to three materials on Luna's node to the stockpile. So you can do that once on your turn. What's different about this is you can only use it on your turn versus the free actions from your breakthroughs and from your anomalies can be used on any player's turn. This board itself can only be used on your turn, but once per turn, what I can do is tick down my die and then I can use that action. After I gain that robotics comprehension, I might want to go for the engineering comprehension, and if I gain that, then I gain the ability of Fa Luna. Indicate a revealed node until your next turn. So until your next turn, Luna is considered present on both her node and that indicated node, which can be super helpful because Nuna's gonna, Luna, <laughs> Nuna, Luna is going to help us gathering uh, data and scanning for data, scanning for materials. She very likely will get some abilities from our breakthroughs that she can help maybe pull us through different nodes, stuff like that. So being able to have Luna at two places at once sounds awesome. When you do play with the specializations or fascinations, you're supposed to draw two and pick one. I just picked two random ones for my two players just because it's easier for me because I haven't played with any of them, so I thought I'd just randomly grab them. You also want to start with each of your three focus cubes at the two pit pip spot, and you're going to tick them down or up. There, You can have three all the way to zero, so just make sure you have them all set at two. Chad is all set up and ready to go. Here we have Sophia. I'm going to use this avatar for Sophia. We have our two personality tiles, our three cubes. We are going to start for our insight, uh, looking to do chemistry, and that's because we have the neuro Neuromancer. <laughs> what a cool name. Neuromancer for our speciality. She can either choose to be an artificer or a nonconformist. So a nonconformist we have a theorized spot, which actually doesn't pip your die down. And if you use the wonder die, you can actually pip it up. And this says another explorer can actually pip up one of their dice. Cool. The artificer, you can do an investigate, uh, pursue an opportunity on your node, or just gain one insight and gather one materials. And a lot of times that material is super helpful. Okay, that's pretty cool. The flip side of these, the artificer is a theorize. Activate a breakthrough of a local explorer at no resource cost, ignoring the once per turn limit. When it says, did it say local? Local means just has to be on the same node. Those uh, different tiles that are out on the table, each one of those are considered nodes. So if we're standing on the same space, we can actually use a breakthrough of someone else's, of Chad's. Pretty good. And it doesn't pip the die down. Uh, or we have, when we rest, which is required each turn, we can either pip up a die or we can gain an insight. So it gives us options. And it doesn't tick, well, it doesn't tick up the die when we put it here, though. I decided to grab the nonconformist. Not sure how much I'll use it, but at least it's there. Let's take a look at Sophia's two specialities as long as she unlocks the correct comprehension, which I think we should be able to do. We have axon allocation. We can tick down a die to distribute to insight to local explorers. If this causes you to gain a comprehension, you may choose any type. So even if maybe I had engineering out uh, as my uh, insight cube, if I ended up doing a breakthrough, which means I'm going, uh, I've filled up the track and I'm moving it one more space over, I could then actually say, no, I want it to be chemistry. Cool. Can't do that for other players, but I can do that for me. We also have neural uh, negotiation. This turn, local explorers may use resources of any types to power their breakthroughs. So as we gain those breakthroughs, in order to use them, we're going to have to spend those resources, either data, material, or energy. This just lets us use any. Each of the planet boxes has a planet primer. You'll need to make sure to read this because each of the planets have different rules that can impact how you do actions. There might be specific actions that are available to you that normally aren't, or you can't do certain actions on this specific planet. So you always want to make sure to grab this planet primer and read it. And the other fun part is just reading this flavor text. I'm telling you, this game has the best uh, flavor text I've ever seen. I hope you enjoy this writing as much as I do. Icky, sticky, beautiful. When we left Earth in search of bizarre, wondrous new worlds, this is exactly what we imagined. The circumstances are a bit more catastrophically on the verge of death than anticipated, but awe in the face of uncertainty is the essence of exploration. 
Strange gargantuan fungal formations tower above us, swarming with alien creatures and dripping with bright liquids. Surfaces are covered in a mysterious powdery substance. The air is thick, almost gelatinous, and there's an uncomfortable abundance of toxic-looking tendrils and suction cups. <laughs> it couldn't be more alien. It took almost an hour of low orbit scanning just to find a place to land. So dense is the fungal vegetation. With a world this full, it's impossible to imagine we won't find the things we need to survive. Whether those things kill us, though, is another question entirely. Let's go touch some stuff. This planet will have toxic spore clouds. So toxic spore clouds cover the surface of the planet. Your movement will agitate them, stirring up a nasty fungal cloud. When an explorer leaves a node, add a spored cloud, which is just a black marker, to the node they just left. When an explorer starts their turn, if there's a spore cloud in their node, they gain one distress. And yeah, remember, that distress is going to push our trust down, and it can very much hurt our uh, focus. And remember, if our focus goes down too far as we're doing actions, we're going to spend more time, and you end up losing the game. This means that if the orange and green explorers share a node and the orange explorer leaves, she disturbs the surface, leaving a cloud of choking ick in her wake. At the start of the green explorer's turn, they would then gain a distress. We do have hallucination cards in this game, and they are absolutely amazing. <laughs> and terrible, or good, it all depends. We don't know. Enough exposure to toxic spore clouds, and you'll begin to hallucinate. Yay! The moment you have two distress, draw a hallucination card and place it next to your dashboard. It remains there until you have less than two distress. You only ever have one hallucination, though. So if I had five distress... Uh, I'd only have one hallucination. Each hallucination grants fungal host, which that is a lot of times a keyword that we need because that's us basically uh, becoming part of this world, right? So we have fungus growing on us. Just think of the fungus that's on a lot of people's feet, <laughs> that type of thing. Before we read about our specific task, let's just go through the actions that you can take on your turn. You have main actions and you can do these main actions in any order. So you can move, you can move yourself from one node to another node, either revealed or unrevealed. If it's an unrevealed node, you'll flip it over to have it revealed. And your base movement is one, but sometimes that can be increased or changed. You can set your three focus cubes. Each time you set them, depending upon where you place them, they'll be pipped up or down. Just know that one of them has to be at the rest. We can also move Luna. Now, Luna can ignore all of these nodes will have different symbols on the edges. And when we move through them, certain things will happen. Maybe time will be spent or maybe we'll gain some insight. If Luna moves through them, none of those things happen, which is great. Luna can also scan her node. So when you do that, you can scan for either data or materials. Just know that if there's already data or materials on that specific node, you can't then rescan for that same material or same type of resource. So if I have one data on that specific node, I can't roll for more uh, data until I've collected that data. The best part about the game though is not your main actions, it's all your free actions. There's just so many of them using your breakthroughs is free using an anomaly uh you know forfeiting an opportunity that's if we already have two out and we want to look at another one we'll have to discard one uh we can alter a scientific pursuit that means we can change what our insight uh cube is going towards but then we have to reset it back to the beginning of its slot we can exchange discoveries or we can contribute to some sort of survival task we also have as free actions when the specific buildings are made, we can gain insight by spending data. We can gain materials, or I shouldn't say spend materials to gain focus increases in our, our dice. With energy, we can spend it to move Luna additional spaces. But those three are all from the different uh, buildings. And so we have to build those specific buildings first in order to do them. For example, I have to build the blue building to be able to then gain insight by spending data. Finally, I am done with setup. It'll probably take you just as long to set up as it did me at trying to explain it. It's a lot faster than it sounds. <laughs> All right, we're going to start our task. Let's read. Alien protozoans. Wow, we said. A fungally jungly planet. It must be absolutely bursting with bizarre and wondrous alien life forms, and it totally was. Thus are terrible respiratory infections. <laughs> Whatever we hope to find down here doesn't matter anymore. All our focus is on developing medicinal <laughs> inhalants to combat whatever it is that's happening inside us. Luna keeps sending us medical reports, and we keep archiving them unread. I don't want to see it. Tell us after it's all better, Luna. Here's what we know. 
The spore clouds are hosted by a vigorous type of alien protozoan. They show little regard for personal protective gear, and our pores are plenty big enough for them to infiltrate. That's about it. As much as we'd love to flee this place so we can finally have that big cry we've been storing up, we fear we'll never discover the cure if we aren't here, all sticky, studying these things in their native environment. We're gonna need a fresh infection, and fine, to let Luna take a closer look. Let's make it fast. Here we can see the setup of the different nodes. We have two already revealed, the swampy quagmires, and you can see where they are. I already have those set up. Our objective here is we need to figure out what we're dealing with so we can figure out how to not to have to deal with it. <laughs> here we have our first task, research spores. Construct the research hut, that is the blue building, on any open build site. Then use Luna to perform an analysis on an infected, aka someone that has a distressed card, uh, explorer there. The infected explorer can be you, but doesn't have to be. So let's say we are having Chad do this action. He could do it even if Sophia is the one that was infected and is in the same space as Luna. If you look over here, it shows that the person with the infection must be present. Luna must be present. We must have at least one robotics and one chemistry comprehension. Ding, ding. I got that. Uh, well, I don't have it yet, but that's what I'm going for. We have to spend three data and it has to be at the specific uh, building, the research hut. Once we do that and we remove that focus cube during the uh, regroup step of your turn, we'll then move to the next task card. We're now ready to start our playthrough. Let's start with Chad. So I can do my actions in any order that I want. So I'm going to actually start with Luna moving. I think I'm going to have Luna go ahead and move into this node. That means we get to flip it over and reveal it. Luna has discovered the Myxogastria ball pit. What a name. Look at here's our explorers right here. Now we have here uh, that says when entering, if you possess rare polymers. So a lot of the different discoveries, or I should say anomalies, will have these different keywords. And if we had one of those anomalies and we moved there, we would then be able to immediately generate or charge to power. Luna, though, won't do any of that. You will see it right up here, that node, if we move from the location we're at to this uh, location, you can see it will gain one insight. So that's kind of tempting. However, if we move anywhere else, we're going to have to spend time. So I'm not sure I want Chad to do that. I do think for my other action with Luna, I'm going to scan. We know we need data. So I'm going to roll the data die. Now, depending upon what we roll, we'll either be able to place three data here, we'll be able to place two data or one. Okay. She is going to be the one collecting data. I did this wrong in my initial playthroughs. She is the one that collects data. We're the ones that collect material. And then anywhere we can collect power. And they're just all just a little bit different. But for scanning, she's the only one that can scan for both materials and data. So we'll roll this die up and we have a two. That's great. So we'll place two data here. After thinking about it a bit, Chad has decided, you know what? He is going to move into that space. So he's going to move here, he gets one free move. Now, if this was a regular node, not the scarab, that's where our ship is, we would then have to place one of these cubes here and we would have created a spore cloud. But you can't create a spore cloud at, at the scarab, so we don't have to do that. And we don't create a cloud until we leave this tile. So moving here, because we passed through that uh, insight symbol, we'll increase our insight by one. In order for us to complete this first task, we need one of the robotics and one chemistry comprehension at least. So gaining insight is going to be the utmost importance. We also need to find a build site, which I haven't found yet. I do think then I will use my wonder die and activate my investigate spot. But because it's green here, I also get to gain one insight. And since it's in my personality tile, I get to actually increase my pips on my green die like so. So now we're already almost halfway. Well, it's about halfway. Halfway up our insight track. The first thing we'll do is grab one of these tokens to denote we've done an exploration. Then because both of these opportunities are available, I get to pick one. I'm going to pick this one. And we're going to place this huge disk on our node. This will denote where we can pursue that specific opportunity. It has to be on this node. And of course, we'll place this token down. We cannot investigate here further. We've found a winged fungal bean. 
you come upon a fungal creature at rest on a waxy pedestal. When you step forward, spiked vines erupt violently from the ground, crashing together to form a vicious, spherical cage around it. Then another such vine skewers you in the chest. You begin to float away. As the pedestal fades from view, you can see the vines retract. Immediately, each explorer must place themselves on an adjacent revealed node. And then we gain one insight. Now that says place ourselves. So that means we aren't moving through the different uh, uh, nodes. So this could help me actually sneak by the time requirement if I wanted to go left or right from the node that I'm at. Uh, before I do that, I do want to show you this opportunity can only be pursued if Luna is present. You have to place one of your focus cubes here and take it down. You then gain this token and one of the anomaly cards and gain two insight. We're now only two insight away from gaining our first comprehension. Looking at the swampy quagmire, I definitely don't want to get thrown in there because any of the spaces I move out of, I'm going to waste two times. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get shot over here. We're going to flip this one over. And this is the Field of Hover Blossoms. All I can say about this game is I love the art. I would love to have a huge poster in my game room with one of these locations or multiples of them, really. This looks so awesome. Now, we just moved from that node. And even though, I sh actually, I should say we didn't get moved, we were placed, which is why we could ignore the symbols over here and the symbol on this node tile. So really, if we had moved here, it would have normally cost us two time, but we'd gain one uh, insight. However, anytime you move off of a tile, anytime, it just says when an explorer leaves a node, it doesn't say move, we do have to place one of those spores on that tile. It was pretty much perfect. We were in a location with Luna. We could have dealt with that opportunity, but we got pushed off, so we can't. But instead, I think I'm going to do some theorizing. I'm going to spend my awareness die ticking it down to a one because it's blue i get to increase my insight by one but the ability of theorizing is another explorer gains one insight this means we're one away from gaining comprehension in robotics and sophia will gain her first insight in chemistry we'll complete our turn by placing our focus cube here in rest because i have to do one in the rest spot that will increase our die by one and i do want to mention there are times when you might want to do your rest as your first action. You don't have to do it as the last one. I just did it as the last one because right now <laughs> it made more sense to have all three dice available to me for the actions that I may want to do. Uh, and then I rested at the end. But a lot of times that's not the right answer. So it is cool how you can rest at any time during your turn. We'll move up our time marker one space. Once you've completed your turn, you just regroup your three focus cubes, and that's it. Now it is Sophia's turn. Sophia would really like to pursue this opportunity, so she's going to use her move, her free move, to move here. Now, there is a spore here, but we're okay so long as we don't start our turn in that location. We also don't place a spore on the scarab, so we don't have to do that. We will gain one insight. We only need three more to get a breakthrough. Sophia will use her awareness cube. She's going to place it here, take it down to a one. She only has to take it down by one to non-organic or do the non-organic extraction, gaining this token and two insight. With two insight, we're only one away from a breakthrough. We also get to grab a scientific anomaly card, flipping it over, and we have close eyes and detonate. We can tick down our die and charge our power to maximum by discarding this. This gives us the rare polymers. Remember, we needed that keyword for one of the locations. Actually, it's where we at. That's where we're at. If we had moved in there and already had this, then we would have been able to uh, generate two power or charge two power right away. What we do is we place this little token here. This is a free action, can be used at any time. The catch is you have to have engineering comprehension to know how to use it. Unfortunately, I don't have that, so we'll just uh, keep it for now. I don't particularly want to end in the location that I'm at. I'd gain a distress at the beginning of my next turn. One of us does need to be infected, but I'm thinking Chad can be the one because he's closer to the right spot anyways. So I'm going to do a traverse. That will tick down this energy die to a one, but because it's the right color, we then gain one insight. And that gives us one comprehension for uh, chemistry. That's going to unlock our ability of axon allocation. And we also gain a breakthrough. I also can flip this to anything that I want. I'm definitely going to do robotics as my next one. 
We then gain a special ability for the rest of the game, and we have Swallow Unsavory Glop. <gasps> so we have to spend one materials, but if we do, and it's limited once per turn, not per your turn, it's one per each explorer's turn, we can discard one material, and a local explorer can remove a distress. Huh, that's cool. So I will have that unlocked for, uh, uh, for Sophia for the rest of the game. With Sophia moving from this location, she could move over here, spending two time and gaining one insight, or she could just go back over to uh, the Scarab and she can maybe explore somewhere else. I'm going to do that. And that also gives us one insight. We'll move our insight cube up by one. I did forget to mention about traverse. When you do the traverse action, you can actually carry another local explorer. So Sophia could have dragged Chad along if Chad was there, and Chad would ignore all of the nodes that he's crossing. But they were in different spots, so I couldn't have done that anyways. I can still move Luna, but I'm right here. I might as well rest, taking up my Wonder Die to a 3. We'll tick our timer up one more space. We can still move Luna and scan with Luna, so let's move Luna to Chad's space, and we're going to roll for materials this time. And we rolled. Can you see that? I think you can. Yes, that's a 3. We have three materials here. Now, something that I didn't understand when I first started playing, materials, it's picked up by us. Data, it's picked up by Luna. <laughs> Don't forget that. We'll regroup to end our turn, and we'll move back to Chad. Chad's first action will be to theorize yet again that will tick his focus cube for awareness down to a time marker. What that means is if I use it again like this and it's going to tick down the die, it can't. So since it can't, for every step you cannot tick the cube down, you take one time. Things take you longer because you're more exhausted. So I'm going to have to deal with that in a little bit. But I really wanted that one insight because that will give us a robotics comprehension and it helps Sophia with her robotics uh, insight. Also, I'm definitely going to choose engineering for him. Sophia will move up one on her robotics insight. Almost all of the robotic breakthroughs will deal with Luna. So let's see what Luna is going to be able to do now. Oh, get Luna's encyclopedic evaluation. An explorer on Luna's node gains two insight. So we can spend one data and someone can just gain two insight. Wow. Limit once per turn. Then I think we're going to do the nano nabbing. We're going to tick down our uh, Wonder Cube from a 3 to a 2. You can see that symbol t says you have to tick down one of your Focus Cubes to do the action. Nanites assemble into extra limbs for Luna. Gain up to three materials on Luna's node. Well, there's three right there. We're going to throw them right in the stockpile. That does not even take a use of that Focus Cube. It just makes it go down by one, which is great. So we, now we have three materials to play with. If someone gains a distress, we have a way for Sophia to immediately get rid of it now. Uh, she can do that up to three times on three different turns if need be. We know we need to build that research hut, so we're going to use our energy cube, ticking it down to a two. We need to either spend a time or have robotics comprehension, and then we have to have a spot on the node to build that specific building, which we do. And uh, since we do have robotics comprehension, we don't have to spend the time. We now have the research hut out. And what this does is at any point in the game, anytime, we can just spend the data that we have in our database, and anyone can increase their insight by one. Kind of insane. Since we are here and have not activated Luna yet, we're also going to do some scanning. Let's scan for some data. We get a one. That's a bummer. Uh, that's, I wanted at least a two. A three would have been perfect, but that's okay. Uh, I do think I'm going to move Luna because we can still move her. Let's have her move to this node and reveal it so that way Sophia knows what she's getting into if she moves into this space. Oh, we have the Anthozoic Forest. I would absolutely love to see that place in real life. <laughs> uh, maybe for at least for a little bit. Look at how small we are. Look at how huge those are. Finally, Chad will rest, ticking up his Wonder Die to a 3, and then we'll regroup, and I will show you where we are on the time track. I do feel like this first task is pretty challenging, so I'm feeling pretty good that we've got two-thirds of it-ish done, and we haven't even gone around to the time track once yet. All right, we're back to Sophia. I'm realizing I did not move with Chad. I wanted to move with him for a couple of reasons. One, we can get insight, but the other reason is I need him to actually get infected. So I'm going to have him move over to the uh, forest that will place a spore here, and he gains one insight. Sorry about missing that. There we go. Sophia will start her turn off by asking Luna to do some scanning. We will scan, and we found three data. 
That is glorious. We're going to have Luna analyze some of that data in her space. We are going to use our awareness cube. It will be ticked down to the time, but because it matches the symbol here, normally we'd only get to pick up or gather one of the data cubes. We can gather two out of the three. Remember, we need a total of three to do our uh, task. So now I've got two of the three we need. Sophia will then do her move action and she is going to move into the same space, that forest, where all three of us are at. But that means we have to spend a time and gain an insight. We have this whole planet to explore and we're doing everything on three tiles right now. <laughs> we now only need two more insight to gain a robotics comprehension. And I'm going to get close. I'm going to investigate that node. That will take this down to a two. Because it matches the color, the wonder die, I will be able to move my insight up one more. And I'm going to grab our next, uh, let's see, I'm going to grab the blue one. I'm going to grab the blue opportunity. We're having a party at the forest because we'll have to place this marker here to denote that is where that opportunity is and an exploration marker so we cannot explore at that location or investigate in that location again. We found a luminous phenomena. Prismatic light ripples through the vicious air, releasing traces of sparking bioelectricity. One of the ripples elongates into a shimmering window through which you see a field of glowing lichen cubes. As you gaze in the window, a wave of mysterious energy pulses outward. Immediately, each local explorer without fungal host, that's both of us, neither of us have fungal host, places their explorer on an adjacent node. Okay, so we each get shoved somewhere and it's places, not moved, so we don't have to worry about the node symbols. Uh, we have reached through the shimmer window. We can only oh, have to take down that die by two. Uh, but if we do use our wonder die, we gain an insight. Plus, we gain another insight and an anomaly, the strange lichen. Well, it appears the game is helping us out a little bit because we're going to get shoved over here. Unfortunately, I don't get that insight. We have to place the spore cloud in this location. But now we're in the right spot. At the beginning of Chad's turn, he's going to take a distress which will then give us the distress. We just need one more data. We have all the comprehension we need with both chemistry and robotics. So we'll be able to finish our first task. <gasps> that was cool. Sophia does have her speciality, but I don't think I want to tick down any of my focus cubes until I find a way to be able to tick them up other than just resting. Uh, she's going to have a hard time with her focus cubes. So I'm not going to do that. They could gain us some insight, which would be cool, but I think I'm just going to rest. With our next rest, we will lose our first endurance. We'll have Sophia regroup her focus cubes. That will end her turn. Moving to Chad, he's starting his turn in a location with a spore cloud. He gains a distress. Some of the planets have unique distress cards, meaning each one is different, or maybe there's just sets of them. In this planet, all of them are the same. Whenever it's gained, you immediately push down trust, and then you have to place it on one of your five action slots. You can never place it over rest because you need to be able to rest each turn. If you have all five slots filled and you're going to grab your sixth one, instead, everyone loses one endurance. So you do not want that. So I'm going to have to decrease my trust, and I have to block one of these action slots. I hardly ever use recover, so I'm going to cover that one up. There is a free action that you can take on this at any time. You can pip down one of your focus cubes to move this to a different action. So if I really needed a recover, I could do that. Just so you know, a recover does let you increase your die by three, but it knocks down trust. So that's why I generally don't use recover. Decreasing our trust does mean we'll flip our personality tiles over. So Sophia no longer will have the theorize ability. She'll have the rest ability over here. Chad will go from having an investigate ability to having a rest ability too. There's one more data in Luna's node. So we're going to use our wonder die. This does mean we only get to collect one data, but that's fine because there's only one there. And that will give us our third data in the database. And I'm actually going to pretend that I was smart. I'm going to say I had Luna move here, collect the one data on this node, because then what I can do, I've given the data back to the forest node. I can then, I'm going to scan for, yeah, I'm going to scan for materials. So that way we can continue. Actually, data would help with our insight. And we already have three materials. So I'm actually going to scan for more data. And we only get one there. Bummer. Uh, but then we can potentially gather some more. Okay, so I've already done my Luna move. I've done my Luna scan. I have done one of my focus cube actions. I'm going to do my second one 
as the action on our actual task. We have an infected explorer, we have Luna, we have both the robotic and chemistry comprehension. We're at the research hut, so we are going to use our energy die here, taking it from a 2 down to a 1, to perform the upsetting uh, analysis. <laughs> I love how that's called an upsetting analysis. We'll see what happens after we regroup. Now, Sophia has the breakthrough of swallowing some unsavory glop, so she, she could give Chad some glop and say, here, take this. However, that does not increase trust. I'm thinking of having her do the support action next time, which would allow her to remove a distress from another explorer and push up trust. So that's what I'm thinking of doing instead of this. Uh, this might be used later. We only have one action left for Chad, and that's the rest action. That's going to take up our cube that just went flying. This is our awareness cube. It will go up to a one. whoop de doo <gasps> We'll hit the time, but then we can choose another explorer. They can also increase one of their uh, focus cubes. So we're going to have Sophia increase her awareness cube as well to a one. Our first endurance, though, will be used, so we'll all decrease our endurance by one. Most of the time, you will see that the endurance will be the same for every player. There's a couple times where that doesn't happen, but most of the time, your endurance will be the same as everyone else's. Okay, now we're going to regroup, and when we do that, we get to read the next task card. We have Toxicity Levels Hazardous. Turns out we are right to not want to know. It's very upsetting. Also turns out we're right to find out anyway. It's only getting worse. <laughs> We figured out a way to whip up a quick antibiotic, but it's a stopgap at best. Add the yellow circle trigger tokens to the second and fifth space of the timeline. Okay, When this uh, time marker reaches one of these triggers, the crew must either consume three materials or lose four focus. Oh my gosh, four focus? That would kill us. The next time we rest, we're going to need three materials. Thank goodness I have the three materials from Luna before. Oh my gosh. That will at least help us here, but we're going to need to get three more before we hit this one. Our next task is fumigate the filth. Let's stop messing around and get serious, shall we? <laughs> we must construct the workshop. Okay, when Nobody has engineering comprehension. Oh, actually, Chad isn't that close. Hopefully, Sophia can help him because she can do that with her ability. Once we create that workshop, we must fumigate ourselves, either consuming a discovery with the rare polymers property or using five power. The entire crew must be present at the workshop with two engineering comprehension. Oh, two of them. We need double. Oh my gosh. This is a fun task. I like this one. It's been a long time since I've played it. I've totally forgotten it. I do love how these tasks are so different. That now completes Chad's turn, and unfortunately, Sophia is also in a Spore Cloud location. She'll definitely cover up the Recover action, and that's going to hit Trust again. It is already at low, so that means we have to pip down to Dice. Uh, now we can choose which two. I think I'll do, uh, I'll do my Energy. No, no, I've got an idea with that one. I'm going to do my uh, Wonder Die here, and I'll do the Wonder Die for Chad as well to cover up that additional negative trust. I do think our first action for this round is going to be using our awareness cube and we are going to do a support action. That will take us down to the time marker but that's going to allow us to heal up Chad a little bit. He will be able to get rid of his infection and will increase trust by one. Having trust go up is super key because if we lose trust again we then don't have to keep pipping our dice down. This also means we'll flip over our personality tiles, which does give me an idea, but I don't think I want to do it. Uh, we have our leader going to investigate. My idea was I could come here, which actually could increase my green die, and I could increase one of Chad's dice. Uh, but then we just get another um, one of these distress because Chad would start his turn in a location with a spore cloud. So I think instead I'm going to do my other idea which was to do a traverse action. This will be pipped down to a one. It will increase my insight, and that means I gain a robotics uh, ability, and I'm definitely going to move to engineering without a doubt. I now have my next ability available to us, which is great. Let's see what our breakthrough is. What will Luna be able to do for us this time? If I can flip this over. Deploy robotic sidecar. 
An explorer on Luna's node may move whenever Luna moves, ignoring all node edge symbols. This effect can begin or end mid-move. Wow, that could really help us with moving around. So Sophia has that ability, plus the swallowing unsavory glop. Sophia is going to pick Chad up. She is then going to move across to this node to get out of that spore cloud. And we have the incandescent slime river. We are not a fungal host, bummer. We could have gained uh, some material, but what we do gain is one insight. However, we do hit the time marker. We can move our insight cube one space and we'll have to move our time marker here, which means we're immediately going to spend the three materials because otherwise we'd have to pip down four spaces. Not gonna do that. And yeah, that should be it for that movement action. We'll have Luna move into this space with us and we'll have her scan for materials and we'll roll and just get one. Oh man, we need a lot of materials, so that's not great. To be fair, there are worse things and we'll take up our die to do our rest for our final action for this turn. We are going to need materials fast. Our focus overall is a bit low, so what I'm going to have Chad do for his turn is use his energy die. It will take it down to the time marker. I am going to have him do another support action. That will allow him to remove the infection that's in Sophia, which is great. Now, we're already at high trust. This normally would push up our trust again, but we can't. Instead, we get to pip up two dice. We're gonna pip up this one, and for Sophia, we'll pip up her awareness die as well. We know we also need more insight, so I think I'm going to investigate actually pipping this die up to a two uh, because I get to move up due to the investigate, and that gives me one insight. And let's see, well, there's only one I can choose. I can choose the pink opportunity. We'll place that marker right here. We have discovered chittering slurp gerblers. You come upon a pack of doughy fungal creatures plumply bouncing around. Their three mouth-like slits cheap, chirp, and loudly suck through the floppy spore-covered tendrils. <laughs> when approached, they display a stunning enthusiasm for violence. They don't seem very bright. Perhaps you can trick them. Also, you're bleeding. <laughs> We have all local explorers gain one insight. Oh, that's awesome. So that means Sophia is only three away from gaining engineering comprehension, and Chad is only two away. We could then spend any focus cube and bamboozle the slurp gerblers, uh, but the only benefit, well, we would get an anomaly, which is great. The other thing, though, is we need to be a fungal host to gain this benefit. Chad's third focus cube will be placed here to rest. I'm not sure I'm going to get three materials by the time we hit this next trigger marker, so I need to be ready to potentially <laughs> lose uh, four pips on our focus dice. We haven't moved or scanned with Luna, so let's move her to this node so we can see what it is. Uh, this is another build site that's actually great, the monolithic spore pillars. We are definitely going to scan for materials here, and we get three that actually... That's amazing, because it is still Chad's turn. We'll take down our wonder die from a two to a one to be able to do this ability. Gain up to three materials on Luna's node. Yeah, I'll do that. So long as we can continue to roll threes with uh, scanning, this should work pretty well. Okay, that will now end Chad's turn. It's Sophia's turn. She is going to take just her basic move action and move over here to the monolithic spore uh, pillars. But doing that does cause uh, these spores here, but I have an idea. I might get a distress here, but we can always uh, take care of that with our ability, if nothing else, the swallowing unsavory glop. And this movement gives us one insight. Gaining the one insight puts us only two away from being able to gain another breakthrough, so let's use our ability here. Distribute two insight to local explorers. Well, that's just me right now, so I'm going to take this down to a one. If I move this to one, two, technically I could choose any comprehension, but I most certainly want the engineering comprehension. And let's go back to robotics. I think that's one of my favorites. We then will gain our first engineering breakthrough, and we have attempt long range node swap. Roll the blue data die to determine your range. You may swap places with Luna if she's within that range. Oh, that's really cool. We have to use uh, energy to power that. We'll then have Luna scan for some more materials. Oh, it's only a one. That's a big bummer. 
Uh, I might just have to have her move again and try and scan next time. <laughs> we are then going to use one of our focus cubes and we're going to build the workshop. We have engineering comprehension. This will go to the time symbol, but that's okay. As long as we don't use it with that symbol and it needs to be ticked down, we're all right. We will then flip this over. And what this ability gives us is we can spend one charge to be able to move Luna one space. So we can move Luna then a ton. Luna has scanned but has not yet moved. Let's move to this node. Let's see what we have here. Ooh, if we're a fungal host here, we would gain a distress. This is the bleeding Clathrus Grove. During Chad's turn, we can see if Luna can find three materials there. The moment that she does, I'll just have Chad use his ability. That's so fun. Sophia will then do a little bit of theorizing. Now there's no arrow here, so I'll just place this here, no problem. But since I used a wonder die, I can tick it up to a two. Also, another explorer, it doesn't say local, just any other explorer can tick up one of their dice. We're going to have Chad tick up his energy die to a two. Finally then, we will do our rest, which will also tick this up to a two. That rest means we have to spend three more materials or we have to deal with four uh, pip downs. I'm not dealing with four pip downs. So three materials, we're good. Chad will start his turn. He is in fungal spores, so he gets infected again. That will push down trust. That's going to change his personality uh, tile. Same with Sophia's. She'll flip it over and also we'll be covering the rest spot. Let's say that this was a recover one. It would just go underneath your distress uh, and you would still not be able to use it. So that works the same way. We're going to root for Luna's scanning abilities, rolling up and we get a two. Okay, that's a two. Do I want to use my ability to pick up two? I think I do. I think I'll use my wonder die to use this ability, taking it down to the time marker, but that means Luna can pick up those two materials she just scanned. Chad will then use his free move, moving into the spore pillars section, gaining one insight. There's already a spore cloud, so we don't have to place another. That will move me one away from gaining my engineering comprehension. I will then use my awareness die and do some theorizing, taking it down to a one. That gives me one more insight, which will give me the comprehension that I need for engineering. We now have two engineering comprehension. And Sophia will move one up on robotics. Boy, she is a lot higher up than he is. Uh, I'm going to have him go for, uh, let's do another, a chemistry because he doesn't have one of those. We'll flip over that next breakthrough and we have apply cerebral cortex shock. A local explorer can pip up two dice for any of those charges. So one charge, two of those. You can do that every turn. Yeah, that might make up for the materials. Although the materials isn't too hard for us to gather with Luna being able to move around and Chad's ability. Let's rest next using our wonder die, taking it up to a one. Uh, and that's because we have an arrow pointing up. This also says required each turn. Another explorer gets to pip up one die. So we'll have Sophia grab her energy die that is at the time and move it up to a one. I love the manipulation of this game. It's so much fun. I think we're doing pretty good on time, but I don't honestly remember the next task. Our final action for this turn, we are going to fumigate. We have two uh, engineering comprehension. All the crew must be present. Luna does not have to be present. I don't see Luna on here. We are at the actual workshop. We're going to use this focus die, tick it down to a one. We either have to have a rare polymers, which is what I have here. So I'm going to spend that. You can see that minus or one, two, three, four, five total uh, charges. But I ended up having the rare polymer. So we'll discard this, not for its ability. We're discarding it for this. So we've completed our next task. That will end Chad's turn. So when he regroups and gathers his three cubes, we can then see what our new task will be. Toxicity levels critical. Typically, when one fumigates themselves, they expect results, or we should say good news types of results. What we got instead was bad news type mutating toxins that are harder to treat and memories of this experience that will take many, many years to properly repress. When the time marker reaches one of these triggers, the crew must either consume, so it's the same thing, New plan. We're going to develop the nastiest, meanest, anti-toxin inhalant we possibly can in the shortest amount of time possible, and then we're going to flee this death swamp and hope for the best. Oh, we get to increase our trust. That will just push us back to the white uh, side of the trust, so our uh, personality tiles will be flipped 
to uh, the investigability and the theorizability. We need to construct the laboratory. Oh my gosh, we need to construct another building. I need to find another building space. The final step will then require one explorer at the research hut and another at the laboratory at the same time. This is so cool. I totally forgot about this scenario. With the proper resources and comprehension, either can have the honors of pushing the button. <laughs> So we need to have uh, chemistry and engineering. So we already have that with Sophia. Sophia actually has either one. So Sophia can go anywhere. Right now, Chad has, uh, yeah, he has this one. So he wants to go where the laboratory is. So hopefully we can find another build space and drop that laboratory down. Sophia's first action for her turn, she's going to charge some power. You can do this from anywhere and you just move the power from the negative to the positive section on this board. I'm doing this because I want Luna to be able to find another build site for us. So Luna will move once. That's our free movement. We then can use our workshop. We don't have to be in this spot to use the workshop. We can be anywhere. It just happens to be we're here. I can spend one charge to have Luna move an additional space. She's going to move over here. Oh, you could soak up energy. This is the spongy trumpet swamp. Unfortunately, though, that will not work for a build site. So we're going to spend one more energy and we're going to have Luna move again. Luna is going to see if there's a build site here. There is. This will work. We have our glowing lichen caves. Let's then have Luna scan for some materials and we have two in that space. I do believe our next action will be to use our awareness die, ticking it down to a one to be able to support Chad. That's going to remove this infection from Chad push up our trust, which is already at the white side. So then that means we gain two pips. So we'll gain one actually on the uh, energy die. And we'll also have Chad increase his energy die because I think moving around is going to be important to a two. Finally, then we will do our rest. That rest will cause us to lose another endurance. The moment we hit this red mark, we've run out of oxygen or something you could say, and we lose. So we can go around three more times. Chad will start his turn ticking his energy die back down to a one to let Luna pick up those two uh, materials in her space. Let's then have Luna move to this node and we see, okay, this is not a build site. Sometimes you can get a closer build site if you get lucky. This is the electromagnetic polyfer maze. <laughs> if we have the rare polymers, we could gain some uh, charges for free. Uh, we have not done a scan yet. I'm going to keep scanning for materials. I, oh, that's a three. Oh, well, we could have had her do that action there, but I didn't. So uh, what was me? I'm going to have to spend one of my focus cubes to get the third, uh, the third materials for this uh, trigger symbol. There happens to be one material in our space. That's how we can do this. Normally, this is how you pick up material. Normally, you can't use Luna to pick up material. I've just been able to do that because of Chad's specialization. I could have picked up two, but there was only one in our spot, So, but we do have the three material we need. Chad will then use his energy cube here to traverse. He's going to pick up Sophia and carry her to the next node. He'll gain one insight for doing that, and I believe we pass through an insight uh, spot through one of those node edges, so he was up two on his chemistry comprehension. Confirmed I was right. There is an insight symbol. So we carried uh, Sophia across. We will have to place a spore cloud here. And then I'm going to use my regular move. If I move down here, uh, but then I'm going to get an, uh, no, no, I'm going to move up to here. Uh, that is uh, my free move that I'm using that will cost one time, but we also gain one insight. We really just want two more insights so that then we can gain one of the chemistry comprehension. Then either of us could be at either of the buildings. And just because I'm here, I'm also going to use my focus cube for uh, awareness to rest. That will also hit the time. So I'm hitting the time twice. Literally a turn or two ago, I was feeling so great about time. Now I'm starting to freak out a little bit. <laughs> Uh, with that moving to and we are spending that material and we're going to need material again in two turns. Oh man. Sophia is starting her turn in a spore cloud. That means she gets infected again. Our trust goes back down to the black side and we're flipping our two personality tiles. We're in this spot with the strange lichen. I don't know if you remember these. We're going to have to take down our uh, wonder die down to a one. Oh boy, is this worth it? I don't know. We're going to gain two insight for doing this though. So that puts us two away from gaining our second robotic comprehension. You can only ever have four total comprehension. 
and we'll grab this strange lichen and an anomaly card. We'll flip over that anomaly card and we have a fungal host, Absorb Pearlescence. Remove one spore cloud from your node and or from an adjacent node. Nice. With that flip, let's have her move over here to the field of hover blossoms. That's where she needs to be is that research hut. And she'll gain one insight that puts her one away from gaining her final comprehension. But also, I can then discard this anomaly as a free action. And that means I can remove the uh, spore clouds from this location and this location. Yeah, I think those are the two that are good to remove. I was worried about her ending at the research hut because she would gain another distress card if she started her turn there again, and then she'd start hallucinating. Some of those are pretty fun, but some of them can be pretty detrimental, and we're getting close here. I can feel it. We're going to need some data in our database, so let's have Luna scan for data, and she gets a three. What that? That's beautiful. This is, this is going well right now. <laughs> I don't want to jinx ourselves, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. Our awareness die then we can use, taking it down to the time marker to analyze data. Luna will analyze two data and we have our two data here. Our final cube to use will be our energy one. We'll have to pass time, but I am going to increase actually my awareness cube to a one. I could gain one insight and gain another chemistry. No, that's not chemistry. That's robotics. Another robotics comprehension but I don't need it. What I really need is focus. Chad is also in some need of focus, but we might just push through. Chad is going to use his ability, ticking down his awareness die so he can collect all three of these materials in Luna's space. That is literally an amazing ability. The first thing Chad is going to do is charge some power. Now he needs to tick down that cube and he can't. So because of that, we're gonna hit the time but I am gonna collect two or charge two power. That will move us to the next trigger point. I do have three materials, so I don't have to lose four focus, thank goodness. I'm then going to apply the cerebral cortex shock, going to spend one of those power to then tick up two of my dice. We'll spend one charge to do this, ticking up our awareness cube to a two and our wonder cube from a zero to a one. Let's have Luna scan for some materials. We've got a three, which is insane. So I'm going to place those three there, then immediately use our ability, ticking down our uh, awareness die to a one to have her gather all three of those. That is awesome. And I still have one more action. I have a free move still too. Our free move, I think, will be to move into this space with Luna, the polymer maze, but that will hit our time. We're surviving, but just barely. Let's then use our awareness die to do a traverse. We don't get the additional insight because it doesn't match. And then I am going to use our wonder die to take up and do our rest. That does mean another explorer can increase one of their focus cubes. We're gonna have Sophia increase her energy die. This will leave a spore cloud here, but we can jump to the glowing lichen caves for that. Time though, will continue to press on as well. Chad will now regroup and it's now Sophia's turn. Sophia will start by collecting some energy with her energy cube. That will give two more and I should say power. I want this to be able to move Luna around. We'll then have Luna scan for some materials. Okay, she found two this time in this space and then we'll move her to be with Chad. I'm going to pretend I did this analyze data before I had Luna move because there was a data in her space and I want that so I can potentially activate the robotic car, uh, sidecar and have someone move around with Luna because I think my last, in general, the last task is always getting back to the scarab and I think that is going to be the fastest way to get Chad over there. We'll then use our final wonder die and we will increase our uh, awareness die with this ability and that will also hit our time. I would love not to have to use our three materials, but I think I do. I think I've got to do it. I'm going to spend the three materials. That way we don't pip down by four because if we did that, we'd be at essentially all <laughs> time markers and then we're just hitting this over and over again. I think we just lose. Before we move to Chad's turn, we're going to use one of the power to go ahead and have him increase two of his dice. We're doing that action on Sophia's turn, and then when we come to our turn, we're going to do it again, ticking both of these up to a two. 
That does mean, though, I only have one power left. I'll then have Chad spend one of his focus cubes, his wonder cube. It does not have to be green to build this. I'm just picking the green one. I'm going to take it down to a one. I do not have chemistry comprehension. I'm two away. But that means I'm just going to spend a time to be able to build the laboratory. This laboratory, you can spend materials to increase dice. You can do that as many times as you want. It's an awesome ability. Uh, but I'm probably not going to be using materials for that. I will move up one more on the time track. We'll have Luna scan for materials, and she gets a two, so there are two there. I'm then going to pip down my, yeah, let's do my awareness cube to a one, so she can immediately pick those up because of her arms. That is awesome. I've got the two material. I've got the two data. I'm in the appropriate spots. I believe with my second cube, we are going to complete our task. We have two data in the database and two materials in the stockpile. That's our two and two. We'll use our energy cube going down to a one to be able to develop the inhalants. And then our final cube will be used to rest. We'll take that up and we're going to increase uh, Sophia's energy die to a two. Oh, this may still work. We'll move our time marker one space over. We do have another trigger and no materials in the stockpile. I don't think I can get three. So I'm going to have to deal with four pip downs and hopefully that will not hit our time. We have just been spored out of our mind. The outlook seems good. Preliminary treatments seem to be causing the infection to subside and all the unexpected side effects are mostly hilarious. <laughs> We get to increase our trust, which actually will go to the white side of trust. So we'll be flipping over our personality tiles. Let's get out of here. So we need to get everyone to the scarab to get out. And then if we do, we survive for now. I think we've got it right here. We're going to deploy a robotic sidecar. An explorer on Luna's node may move whenever Luna moves, ignoring all node edge symbols. In order to use that ability, we have to use one data. I'm also going to use one power so we can have Luna move two spaces. Luna can move one, two, and bring Chad right along with her. That means Chad is safe. We then can do our basic move to move here. That will place a spore cloud. And then we can do a traverse action. We're going to use our uh, focus cube here, use it and go down to a one to go ahead and jump on to the scarab. That will mean we need to spend a time, but I think we're okay. We'll move this marker onto the trigger spot. Sophia will then tick three of her cubes down all to time. And then we will have Chad tick down his awareness cube down to a one for the four tick downs. But then all we have to do is rest. We can rest. Actually, we have to place three for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll randomly collect something. I don't think it matters, actually. I think we can do this. And we'll theorize. There we go. With theorizing, we can tick up this die and pip up one of Chad's dice. But that should be enough. We'll hit the time one more time, but we're all on the scarab ready to escape. That was quite enjoyable, if you ask me. Chad and Sophia were able to escape the fungi massacre that was happening on this beautiful planet called Winora. Oh my gosh, what a great game. Can you tell it is definitely a puzzle? It's not an adventure game. Don't get this if you're looking for an adventure. I would. There's so many other better adventure games, but this is a puzzle game that's set in space. It reminds me a ton of that Robinson Crusoe feel, right? Usually the first time you play, you're going to fail a task, and that's okay because you'll learn more about what the task wants. Heck, I hadn't played this one in over a year now, I think, and I still just had so much fun, even though I kind of remembered some of it, but I actually, have, I really didn't remember any of it. Uh, I forgot I had to get all these different buildings out and different comprehensions, and uh, I really don't know if we would have been able to do it if Chad didn't have his specialization and Sophia wasn't pumping out comprehension like nobody's business. Oh, this was great. Okay, so I definitely am going to do another play. I'm going to do three more plays right away of the next three new planets. I want to show the new planets. You can see planets two, three, four, and five on one stop. I'm still going to do them on Meet Me at the Table, but I want to show the new ones next so you can see if you want to pick up those boxes, especially if you have the base game already. I believe each of these planet boxes are only about 15 bucks, and they give you at a minimum three tasks. Each task can be played at least two times each, and then if you take a break and come back to it, I, I yeah, this... It, 
I don't even think you need to because I can immediately play this again and have a very different experience based upon the cards that show up, where the nodes are, all the different abilities. Oh, I love this game. This is one that I will never be getting rid of. That it's It's got to be somewhere within my top 10 favorite games of all time. It's just so good. I love the puzzle. It always feels tight. When you fail, all I want to do is replay it and try and succeed. To me, that is so good. I just am so excited for the three new planets. As always, thank you so much for watching, commenting, subscribing, all of those things. Keep Barrett and I going. Make sure to check out some of our other videos. I've got a campaign of Zaya going on. Barrett has one for Kingdom Death. And of course, we have our live Arkham Horror LCG plays right now every Tuesday night. If you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. Goodbye, everyone.